What's up, everybody? Mike here coming to you with something I don't normally do. We're going to talk about toys today and toy displays, how to dress them up and make them look better. This is my current six scale Hot Toys collection. I'm a big fan. I love how the displays turned out, especially after we breathed some life into them and added the backdrops here. Let me focus on those guys back there so you can see what I'm talking about. We got Thor and Iron Man spinning around up there. You can't see it from here, but I'll toss in some B-roll. It's kind of a purple galaxy looking backdrop with an Avengers A kind of shadowed in there. Here is Mando with the Razor Crest behind him and a little Tatooine scene. All super cool looking stuff. And I'm going to show you how to make them because I got these guys for just under $20 a piece. Some of them were in the $15 range, $17 to $18 range, depending on how big they end up being. Like most people, I started with one hot toy and then you slowly grow the want and the desire for more. And once you get more, you want a display that does them justice. This is an Ikea PAX shelf. I know tons of people use the Detolfs. I didn't want a Detolf because that's just not my taste. But these backgrounds will work on a Detolf or a PAX, anything else from Ikea, and honestly, any other shelf space that you can measure. As long as you can measure it, this is going to work for you. I feel like this is the best that I've seen. I feel like it's about the lowest cost that I've seen. And I don't have any money to make on this stuff. I'm not sponsored by anything that I use in this process. I just want to share it with you so you can get some high quality, low cost backdrops of your own. Now this particular video was inspired by the bottom shelf. I wasn't going to make a video like this, but I ended up filling out that bottom shelf with the new Black Series Mandalorian helmet. And when I stepped back and looked at the entire unit as a whole, it just didn't look cohesive. It kind of looked on its own and it, and it clashed with everything else without having a backdrop in that bottom shelf. Welcome to the floor where we can do our first step and measure how big we want our backdrop to be. We need a width and a height. And my height is going to be from the bottom here to not here. That's the bottom of my light bar. I actually want it to the, the bottom of this shelf right here because that's basically my ceiling within this little cubby hole. Uh, width is pretty self-explanatory. But you know the old saying, measure twice, cut once? We're not cutting. We're ordering. Uh, and we're spending money on it. So we want to measure about 74 times and cut or order once. So our first measurement is gonna be my width. You can see here, we're pretty spot on 18 and a quarter there. Here, that's better. 18 and a quarter, but I don't want the backdrop to fit so snug that we really have to shove it in there. I want a little bit of room all the way around. So my rule has been measure as exact as possible and then knock off an eighth of an inch. And that'll give you a little breathing room all the way around. So this measures 18 and a quarter. I'm gonna to wanna to order an 18 and one eighth inch width. And then for my height, we're gonna be at, where are we at there? 17 and three eighths. It's about 17 and three eighths. So we're gonna round down to the nearest eighth and order our backdrop at 17 and a quarter. So here we go, we got a 18 and, a, I'm sorry, 18 and an eighth width by 17 and a quarter inch height. And as you can see, that little bit of room all the way around, if we look at our Darth Maul setup here, there's surprisingly a little bit of wiggle room in there. You really can't see it all that much, but it makes getting those things in there a whole lot easier and it gives you a little more leeway on your measuring than you would have otherwise. And that's all we need from down here, just solid measurements. Measure a bunch, order once. You don't wanna to have to reorder these things because they do cost money. But at the end of the day, I mean, if you really do mess up, it's not gonna set you back a ton, but try not to do that. We have our measurements. Let's hop on the computer and create some custom backdrops. Just like many people, including a lot of you probably, I love the Mandalorian concept art. And I think those art pieces work great for these backdrops. The concept art just works in perfectly. It's not too high resolution. It's not too perfect. And it just kind of blends in really nice with the scene. So I'm going to do the same thing for this Mando helmet. Even though it's not a full-on figure display, I still want it to have that nice 
cohesive look with the rest of it. So the easiest way to pull this concept art is to go to starwars.com. I have some of these websites preloaded in case we have any trouble with the connection, but we should be okay. And up in the search, just type Mandalorian concept art. And they actually post tons of concept art galleries that you can pull from. Now, I personally know that the piece that I want is from chapter three. I thought it'd be really cool for the image of the armorer in the armory, specifically where Din Djarin first enters the armory and sees her working her magic over there. I thought this would be a really cool look to go behind his Beskar helmet. So I'm gonna take this and make it into a backdrop. I just right click and open image in new tab. So that way I have this whole thing as just a plain cohesive image, it's on its own now. And then I'm gonna save it to my desktop and it's not giving me a JPEG option, which is fine. So we're not gonna save it. What we're gonna do is actually take a screenshot of it. And I know a lot of people are against screenshots because they give you low res and things like that, but we're actually gonna be able to up res this in the next step. So we'll screenshot that. So the next thing that we're gonna do is make this thing the proper size. And tons of people are gonna tell you that you need Photoshop, you don't. There's actually a free tool through Adobe. If you just go to spark.adobe.com and then go to features, and resize image. This will let you upload your specific photo and pop that in there. So there we go, we're resizing our image. Now this is where those measurements come in super handy. So my little display section is 18 and an eighth wide by 17 and a quarter high. That's how big I want my backdrop. So we're gonna change this drop down to custom and then we're gonna unlink these two things. Now this is measured in pixels, not in inches. And for a good high fidelity print, you wanna be shooting for 300 pixels per inch. So on the width, I want mine to be 18.125 inches wide. So to get 300 pixels per inch, we're just gonna go 18.125 times 300. This math is literally the toughest part of this process. That gives me 5,437 and a half pixels. So I'm gonna round that up to 5438. And then, don't worry about this error, you can just X that out. And then for the height, I want it 17 and a quarter high. So 17.25 inches times 300 pixels per inch that gives me a total of 5175 pixels. There we go. That image is now the proper size for my the section of my display. If you want to move this around because you want, maybe you want all of Din Djarin in there and you want the Mandalorian skull off to the side a little bit, you can do that. If you want just the armor and you kind of want Din Djarin out of there a little, that's fine. I, I kind of keep it in the middle around here somewhere. I feel like that's nice and balanced and looks really good. So now we're gonna go ahead and download that and it's gonna prompt you to open all this in the editor, but you don't really need to because you can see right down here, we're all downloaded. So I'm gonna save that to my desktop so it's nice and easy to find. And then we're gonna go ahead and order our backdrop. And the service that I use is called Artisan HD. So just go to artisanhd.com. I've been using these people for years and they've given me nothing but wonderful quality prints. The one thing I do have to point out is that when that download from Adobe uh, saves to your computer, it's going to save as a funky file type. Okay, now you can see my entire screen. So you're going to see that this file opens up in preview just fine, but it's not saved as a normal JPEG. So I'm just going to go file and export as a JPEG. Just because Artisan HD requires JPEGs, they won't take PNGs. Trust me, convert it to a JPEG. It'll take you about two and a half seconds. Best quality, save it up, and you're good to go. So we can get rid of that file. 
and we're good to move back into artisan hd so we can order our print all right so i already have one in my cart but i'm going to put another one in my cart we'll just go to print products click on the print products heading so it gives you this big old list it doesn't matter what you click on as long as you pick one of these and click on customize that's where you want to be uh, once you click on customize here i'll go ahead and delete this from my cart so we can recreate it fresh you're going to click on artisan printing and you're gonna upload an image. Now this is already in here because I've already uploaded it, but you're not gonna have that. So you're just gonna click here, kind of open your file explorer, open. This is just gonna upload the same thing again for me. It'll be the first one fresh for you. Doesn't take long to upload, super simple process. And now you choose the image that you want to print. Over here, it's gonna default you to a little smaller. I don't know why it does this, but it does. I want mine at 18.125 inches wide. So I just add that 0.125 inches wide. Tab over, it automatically changes my height to what I want it at 17 and a quarter. And you can see that we are at an excellent quality print. That's what that times 300 math to come up with the much larger pixel density. That's what that did when we were resizing the image, ensuring that we ended up with an excellent quality print. Next step is to go down and select a printing option. You're gonna see all sorts of tempting options. This Fujiflex Crystal Archive is incredible paper. I have framed prints in my house done on this and it looks fantastic, but it's just not the use case for a backdrop like we're doing. What you wanna do is scroll all the way down to the bottom and it's actually gonna be the cheapest print option on here. You're gonna choose this 3 16 inch black gator board. And you're gonna see why when we unbox my backdrop. This 3 16th inch black gator board is the perfect use case for what we're doing here. It's cheap, it's easy, and you add it to cart. And as you can see, you have an extremely high quality, phenomenal figure backdrop for under 20 bucks. When I ordered mine, there was a 20% off the entire website thing going on. So I got it for just over $15. If your order is under a hundred bucks, they're going to charge you $15 in shipping. If you're ordering a bunch of backdrops and outfitting a detail for another cabinet or something like that, it'll get you over that hundred dollar mark and it's going to be free shipping to you. If you're just doing three or four prints, heck, even one or two, the $15 shipping can be a bit much, but at the end of the day, I mean, even $35 for this backdrop is a pretty good value based on what's out there on the market. Sign up for their email list. You'll get a promo code that keep searching online for different art. Artisan HD always has a sale of some kind going on. It may or may not apply to these Gator board prints. If they do, it's going to save you a bunch of money or you can just be patient and wait for the next sale to come around that does apply to these. So that way you can get it with either a free shipping or a pretty deep discount to the order total. But for 15 to 20 bucks, you're about to see why this is the highest quality backdrop that you can get for the money. And now the only thing left to do is wait. It's usually gonna take these things a couple of weeks to get to you, so patience is your friend, but it will be rewarded. So we'll be back with you when my shipment arrives. All right, it's delivery day. Delivery day, always a happy day. And we have a huge box. So let's open it up and see how our backdrop looks. Today's May 17th, I placed this order on May 6th. So we were spot on, order to delivery, 11 days. Your mileage may vary, but that's what I've experienced. Under two weeks is pretty good. We're gonna open this guy up. Okay. Oh, that's nice. That is a nice, nice looking backdrop. It's a little pixelated because we're dealing with a lower resolution image, but that's fine. This is a backdrop. We're not looking for incredible print quality here. And the higher resolution the image that you print, the better this is gonna look. But here is what we're looking at. We have a perfect, we have a perfect print of Mando looking at the Mandalorian covert with the armor back there. 
doing her thing, uh, forging some stuff. So let me go over the material with you here. This is gator board. Now this is a direct to gator board print. This stuff is basically a uh, backing piece on both sides. It's the same kind of backing material on both sides and it's filled with a little bit of foam. Here, let me see if I can get you a closer up look of what this is. So here's what we're talking about. We have a white piece on the front, which is what gets printed to, a black piece on the back, and foam in the middle. This is a super durable material. This material is usually used for photo backings, not for actually photo printing, which makes it cheap and affordable and perfect for these backdrops because this is one of the only companies I've been able to find. I'm sure there are others, but this is the company that I've been able to find who does prints directly to this gator board. So you don't have to pay for the photo paper. You don't have to pay for anything like that. Again, this is a nice kind of matte, mostly matte finish once the ink goes on and you get the print, you kind of get a bit of a, it's kind of a, the equivalent to like an eggshell if you're talking about paint finish or a semi-gloss, not quite as high shine as a semi-gloss. I like this a lot because it doesn't pick up too many reflections from the lighting that you may have installed in your display cabinet. So just the ambient lighting in the room. You don't want the backdrop to pick up a whole lot of those reflections because it's distracting. Um, you can see here, I have, I have a huge window over here and I have a little LED light providing some additional light so you can kind of see some reflections there, but th this isn't like a mirror finish that we're talking about here. It's nice and soft. The reflections are very soft edges and they fall off quickly. It's just a really good material for backgrounds because again, this is to support what's in front of them. The background is not the star, the display item is the star and this just plays a supporting role. So let's get down there and put this in behind the Mandalorian helmet and see how it looks. Okay, here we are back down on the floor. We're gonna get this helmet out of here. Blow a little bit of the dust off the top. So it's looking pretty when we put it back and we're gonna get our backdrop situated now. As you can see, I have these little cable covers up here, covering the cable from the lighting. So that creates a bit of an uneven ceiling, so to speak. So I usually have to cut a little notch in these backdrops. If you wanna cut a notch in them, it's super easy to do. I use one of these, just a little like box cutter knife uh, with a razor blade coming out the top. Let me see if I can show you how we do that. First thing I'm gonna do is get this backdrop in there and make sure that that notch is necessary. And here you can kind of see how tight that it fits. We really don't have all that much room in there. So it turns out that that eighth of an inch gave us just what we wanted. It fits nice and tight. It was just what we wanted, I should say. So I'm just gonna angle that in there, push up, and okay. So you can see that we are not all the way there. We're angled still, and it's coming in contact with the little cover. So what we're gonna do is use this to cut a notch in the top corner of the backdrop so it can go around that. I'm gonna mark it here and here and I'm just going to cut that notch to be about maybe a half an inch. So to cut this notch I'm going to use this guy a bit like it's just a like a toothless saw. You just kind of push down in a little bit at a time. I usually cut it about a half an inch to clear the uh, the cable cover there. Okay, that's one, and then we'll go to our other mark. It's kind of a push and slide type of situation. You're gonna get a little bit of marring on the back, but I mean, that's the back, it's not that big of a deal. And then a quick little plunge cut here 
on the front. I probably should be doing this on the floor or on a protected surface, but I'm trying to show you guys the process and how I get this done. Okay, and then we can turn it the other way. Same thing from the other side. And we're about there. And there you go. You have a nice little notch that will clear. And it looks a little ugly on that side, but the important side, the front, looks just fine. Now, it exposes a little bit of this white paper here, and I'm not a huge fan of that, so I just kind of color that in with a Sharpie. And once that's all colored in, it looks good as new, and it's custom for my display. It'll fit wonderful. You might want to take a little more time and care on yours, which is great, but for me, this is kind of a, this is a bottom shelf backdrop. I'm not going to put too much time and effort into making it 100% perfect. And besides, it's a backdrop. Good enough is good enough. So let's flip the camera back and get this guy installed. Okay, so we got this backdrop custom printed for our space with our little notch. And it should just slide right on up and fit perfect. And there you go, custom backdrop in the back of the display. We put our helmet back. And I think we're looking pretty darn good. I don't know, personally, I kind of dig it. There we are. Okay, backdrop installed and it's looking fantastic. Remember, this wasn't supposed to be the best looking installation in the world because it's just a backdrop going behind a helmet, which is gonna cover up the majority of the backdrop. I just wanted to have a backdrop on that bottom shelf so the whole display is cohesive and it didn't feel so left out and disconnected. It did the job. I'm really happy with how the whole thing looks as a unit now, but go back to the B-roll in the beginning of the video. You can see how good these backdrops look when properly showcasing a figure. And do me a favor, Give this video a like and leave a comment down below as to what backdrops you're going to order, what custom creations you're going to make, and what cabinet it's going to go into. Remember, if this is going into a Detolf, quick tip for you, put a couple uh, strips of magnetic tape down the back of those backdrops on the sides. When you put that magnetic tape and then you put the backdrop into the back of the cabinet, the magnetic tape will hold on to the wire frame back there. So that's the one quick tip about Detolfs. Measure correctly, get that magnetic tape, and it'll be safe and secure. But in the back of a cabinet like this, I don't use any adhesive at all. There's no double-sided tape, there's nothing. They're, they're cut to the right size because we measured properly. You put them back there, and that gator board being super durable and three eighths of an inch thick. It's just thick enough to sit back there on its own and stay put. So I'm happy with mine. I hope you're inspired for what yours are going to be and the custom stuff that you're going to create. Again, let me know in the comments down below, like, subscribe, all the youtube -y stuff. And if this video does well, maybe I'll make some more of these. I'll talk to you all later. Thanks for joining me.